But the promises of Easter, that's a title for my Easter message today. Well, Mark was coming out of church one day, um, um, actually yesterday, like the picture you see, and the minister was sitting, um, sitting at the gate, shaking hands the people as they go out. A minister said to Mark, you need to join the army of the Lord, army of the Lord. And Mark replied, I am already in the army of the Lord, reverend. The minister asked again, then how come I can only see you on Easter and Christmas at church? And Mark whispered back, I'm in the secret agent, secret service. Well, I'm not going to ask this question um, as you go out today, but you are welcome anytime in the church, any Sunday. Well, I never forget Easter 2016 on the Monday night, that Holy Week. You see my um, old computer. I, I downloaded some children's Sunday um, school video. I use that website quite often. Next day on Tuesday, I turned on the computer and it was not responding. It's, I just couldn't get anything on the screen. Oh dear. Oh dear. You know that, you know, that always happened when you need a computer most. And I was thinking about all my sermons, resources, my PhD, um, the thesis I was writing that, but I didn't back up. Not everything. Oh, oh dear. Then I managed to find the computer repairer. I'm in like Waterloo. I'm Zetland. Drove to him, and he checked my that old computer and said the hard drive is so corrupted. He wasn't sure whether he could get the old data back. So I, I left my computer as I, if I buried it. Um, then he rang me saying he would be able to save all the data and get my computer, my computer repaired fixed by Thursday afternoon. So it happened Tuesday. It will be fixed by Thursday. You may remember I talked about Easter dawn services um, we used to have at uh, back in Bronte. And it was combined service, you may see. And by the way, I find Ines photo, because um, we look so young, I just put without Ines permission. And we, it it was a combined service bar with church in the marketplace, Bondi Junction. There's Ulara Double Bay that's now called Uniting Heart and Soul. That's where John T. and Rachel is being part of that. Our, my church, Lugabra, sometimes Marubra. So ministers in this area, we share the turn to preach. On that particular Easter, it was my turn to preach and I'm having no computer. And I was thinking about the message whole week. Computer died on Tuesday will be resurrected on Thursday. So I thought this could be a great message for that. On the third day, my computer will be resurrected. By the way, um, you may remember that we have this Easter dawn service for 20 years. We didn't stop due to weather. And what did I say? Easter, it never rains. Let's see the weather next year. On Thursday morning, I rang him. There was no answer. I rang him about five times. He then rang me back about three o'clock in the afternoon saying he still needed a time to install windows and, and so on. At least I had got my old data back. All those data got back. But it took, it took another 10 days to my computer back. But although I'm so thankful for him, I was disappointed that he did not keep his promises. He promised me everything will be fine on the third day. But in a way, it was an empty promise. It took actually nearly two weeks to have my laptop resurrected. Promises of Easter. The world is full of empty promises. We watch television. Advertisement telling us we can be rich, we can be famous, healthy, if we, you can only purchase this product. But unfortunately, we know that the world's promises are full of emptiness. But our God is different. Instead of promises full of, empt instead of, promises full of emptiness, on Easter, God gave us emptiness that is full of promise. So this morning, I would like us to think about the promises of Easter, and each promise is marked by something empty, something empty, empty cross, empty tomb, 
and empty burial clothes. So let's begin with empty clothes. Because cross was empty, we have a promise of forgiven sins. Let's go back to the first Easter morning. It was early morning and a few women are on their way to the tomb. They are going to anoint Jesus' body. As they come up the top of the rise in the path, they all stop, motionless and quiet. They look at the, these three crosses in the distance. Only in the middle, that is the one Jesus hung on. Hung on. There are still stains of blood on that cross. It is that place where he died. But today, it is empty. Empty of Jesus' body, but full of God's promises. Full of hope for you and me. The promise of empty cross is that you and I can stay forgiven. Because it was on the cross that Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. On the cross, that empty cross, it was there that his blood was split for our salvation. Well, let's get back to the ladies. One of them wonders aloud, who will move the stone for us? Who will move this stone? They have a good reason to be concerned as one of those stones that have placed in front of the tomb was probably weighing Roughly two tons, two tons, very heavy. Not only that, soldiers had sealed it, so no one was allowed to move it without permission. However, ladies continue. As they approached the burial site, they came up something even more remarkable. The soldiers are all unconscious. Stone has been moved. The angel glowing like lightning is sitting on it. Please listen to his words. Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here. He has risen. To those who know Jesus Christ as their Savior, death has lost its sting. Why was the tomb empty? Because our Lord Jesus was alive. The angel said, He is risen. The promise to us is that we can to can we can to live even if we die and that is a promise second promise for us the Easter empty tomb and it does not end there there is one more promise it is a promise of empty burial clothes after the angels had spoken to the women they immediately went back to the apostles reported what they had what had happened. With this incredible news, Peter and John immediately raced back to the tomb to see for, for themselves. And Peter discovered that tomb was empty. But that is not all. That is not all. Inside, Peter found the clothes, burial clothes that Jesus had been buried in. They too were empty. And I like this message Bible translation towards the end of this um, today's verse saying, neatly folded by itself. Neatly folded by itself. If someone had stolen his body, they would not have removed the burial clothes. They would not fold them up neatly and left them where they lay. Truly, Jesus was resurrected. Then he appeared to Mary Magdalene and to all the apostles, eventually to all over 500 people. And that is the promise of empty burial clothes that Jesus desires to have personal relationship with each one of us, just as he did with his disciples 2,000 years ago. The cross could not hold him. The tomb could not contain him. The burial clothes were unnecessary because Jesus is alive. And he talked, he touched, he loved, and he healed. He did it on the day of resurrection, and he does it still today. And most importantly, he wants to do it with you today. 
Well, this morning we have heard these three promises that God has made to us through Easter. And my question this morning to you is this. Will you take those promises and believe that they are given for you? Will you, be, will you believe that Jesus still talks? Will you believe that Jesus still touches, loves, and heals you? Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So I pray, I hope, this indeed become your message on this Easter 2022. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.